So the question then becomes, how do I clean white leather? I apply directly to the leather and I scrubbed. And I'm going to give that a thumbs up. First rule of thumb, never get white. Simple as that. But you have white. Maybe you have a Tesla. Maybe you have one of these Cadillacs. And our test model, a 2024 LYR. First I'm gonna show, then I'm going to explain. Got my microfiber cloth, variety of scrub pads, variety of scrub brushes. But we're gonna keep it super simple today and I'm going to offer some tips. And our checklist. First we do a pre-inspection. How dirty is our leather? Is there any glaring warning indicators that I need to be aware of? There is not. Now, just to apply some context, this car only has 2,800 miles on it. Nobody would consider that high mileage. And yet, because it's white, the leather is already showing plenty of dirt. It has already been pre-vacuumed, which means we can come in and start cleaning. First, I'm gonna use Leather Cleaner by Chemical Guys, which is pH balance superior cleaner. Notice the sarcasm in my voice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these pads because a lot of you probably already have one of these at home. Now, just to make a distinction, we want a non-abrasive scrub pad. So for example, this is heavy duty scrub pad. This is non-abrasive or more precisely non-scratch. That is what you need to look for in case you're grabbing a pad that you do not know whether it's abrasive or non-abrasive. If it doesn't say non-scratch, non-abrasive, don't use it. I'm also gonna bust out my fabric clean, diluted down 20 to one, which is the manufacturer's label instructions. Now, if you wanna keep your life super simple, you could use this and avoid having to buy this. Now, if a fabric cleaner like this will work on virtually any material inside the car, including leather, then that would prevent me from having to buy a second dedicated leather cleaner. Therefore, this would be the simpler approach to keeping your leather clean. This would be the more complicated approach. But nonetheless, many of you will think that you need a dedicated leather cleaner. Therefore, I'm gonna bust it out and let's just, we'll do a little comparison in the moment. I apply directly to the leather, not a heavy application, but a light application and I scrub and it's immediately breaking up the dirt. And I'm going to give that a thumbs up. One application, one scrubbing, one mopping up. And this is, I would call this 99% clean. For most of you out there, that will be clean enough. As a professional detailer, I'm gonna go in for a second application, another light application, come back in, scrub, mop up, check my results. Now as a detailer, and I have to be very conscientious of the details, what are the details in this moment? Well, it's the stitching. It's the little separation between the panels that have been stitched together. It is this little ribbing here. So this is where the details are, and the difference is always in the details. Now, because of my experience, I'm gonna scrutinize this at a level that virtually none of my customers would ever scrutinize it to that level, but I'm going to do it. For example, this ribbing, let's just pretend it's not acceptable. Let's pretend, which I don't have to pretend because I know that I can achieve a higher level of perfection with a detail brush by cleaning this little gap, this space right in between the ribbing and where it meets this panel here. So once again, just a dusting of an application and I'm gonna come in and I'm going to just get this brush right in here. Excuse this little cling on piece of hair. Now I'm gonna come in with my cloth and I'm going to be very deliberate, very precise, very intentional at cleaning inside that little groove now I check my results. Now I'm happy. I'm a happy detailer. A happy detailer means a happy customer. Now I've just cleaned this section. It's time to move on to the next section. So you literally break it down. It's like the saying, how do you eat an elephant? 
Well, you can't eat an elephant in one bite. You can't clean an entire seat in one go. You've got to break it down in doable bite-sized pieces. So you break down the seat in a systematic approach. You pick where you want to start, but you just do it section by section and you focus on that section. You clean it, check your results. When it's time to move on, you move to the next section. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, section by section until the entire seat is done. We can come in and see how clean we have. Let's look at the other side, which typically is going to be less dirty because that is not the point of entry. This side over here gets more wear and tear, more dirt accumulates just through natural use of the car. But in keeping with the theme, since I've already cleaned this, I'm just going to move that direction and clean section to section to section until I eventually end up over there. Now I'm gonna to switch to the fabric clean and show you that in fact, this too can work and it can be a way for you to simplify your world. My same non-abrasive scrub pad. Now already you might be saying, Darren, you're breaking your own rules. Now you're just engaged with three panels simultaneously. I thought you said to go panel by panel. Well, that's where you dictate. It's like, I know I can manage three panels at once. The working time's not gonna be so extensive that my product's gonna dry in the interim as I'm scrubbing one panel. But let's say I was working in the direct sun, kind of like it is right here right now, then my chemical has the ability to dry before I can actually get to all the panels. So therefore, I would reduce my working sections based on the ambient temperature and the ambient weather conditions. Now that I've just bloviated on, I'm going to um, re-engage with some liquid cleaner, scrub, paying attention to the seams and kind of forcing my finger and the scrub pad down into those seams a little more deliberately and precisely. Mop up. Yes, I always recommend a microfiber cloth for two reasons in this moment. It's highly absorbent and it does not leave lint. That's the winning balance in this moment. You could even argue it's safer for the material, but to me, that's a, a non-starter because I'm actually using something way more aggressive than this microfiber cloth. So any cloth you choose would be a non-issue compared to the scrub pad. So check my results. Looks pretty good, 98%. But once again, we've got these panels and the stitching and where they come together, it creates this valley where dirt can get trapped in there a little more. So I'm going to come in for a repeat light because I've already cleaned it once. Got my little detail brush. I'm going to kind of force these seams open, perform a quick little douching in the seams come in deliberately and intentionally with my finger, mop up in between these seams, the dirt and the clean product, mop up the overspray overall. I'm gonna say acceptable results, time to move forward, time to deal with this panel. And yes, in case you haven't connected the dots already, the fabric clean performed just as well as the dedicated leather cleaner which if you're picking up what I'm putting down means that you can keep your life simpler by having one product, not two products. And right there, now we've got clean white leather. Now you've addressed the seating area, the point where your ass connects to the seat. Let's work our way down now to the side of the seat. Now, just as an FYI, this will transition from leather to vinyl as a rule. The operating rule is that the more you pay for your car, the more leather is going to be used. They're gonna naturally transition into vinyl because it's cheaper, it looks the same, it all looks like leather, and you as a car owner probably think that it's all leather when in fact it really isn't. If you read the fine print, usually it will say something like leather appointed seating or leather seating surfaces, which is code for, hey, we're not using leather to construct the entire seat. There's just gonna be parts of the seat that are leather. Now this section of seats 
especially the driver's seat, is notorious for getting skid marks from people's feet as they slide in and out. And they grab the heel of their foot right against here and they'll make some skid marks. This is not extensive at all. I probably won't even have to do anything special. We shall see. Scrub pad. One thing I love about scrub pads is that it conforms perfectly to your hand and the, the surface contours themselves, the nuances of the material like that. Now you could easily say that a brush does the same thing. All those little bristles conform. Now the big difference between a brush and a scrub pad is this. This has long bristles, which means as you're scrubbing, those bristles, as they come off the edge, are gonna flip up all the cleaner if you don't have the awareness to manage that or to account for that. Therefore, if you switch to a scrub pad, it conforms to the material perfectly, conforms to the dimensions of your hand, but it does not have bristles to flick stuff about. The difference with this, which will also happen with this, is this thing called gravity. So if you're using enough cleaner, and you're scrubbing, what will happen is this will start dripping down into areas that may be unwanted. So that's the management that you would have to apply with both. But using a scrub pad, you don't have to worry about the bristles flipping out dirty cleaner every time you're working. That becomes very problematic. If you're a beginner, you're not even gonna consider that because you're so hyper-focused on what you're cleaning. It's not till you move forward that you realize, wait, what are all these little dirty spots all over the car? It doesn't even make sense. Well, that's because you flipped it up with this as you were hyper-focusedly cleaning this area and did not reel that you're splattering cleaner all over the interior of the car. You're actually creating work for yourself. Okay, you've got enough job security as, as, as it is going on. Now I'm gonna move down to here, which is a hard plastic. It's got a heavy texture on it. Chances are this will be sufficient, which is proving to be sufficient. Now this is where having the right tool for the right job is important and will make your life simpler and easier and produce more effective results. So for example, this texture is pretty significant. The more extreme the texture is, which means the more extremes, the high and the lows will be, that will progressively render this ineffective because this remains mostly flat, even though it conforms to the curvature of your hand and the surface, it's going to glaze over or slide over the heavy texture and only clean off the high points, which means in a heavily textured area, you may have to switch to a bristle type of brush so that those little fibers or bristles can actually get down into those low valleys or the low points of the heavily textured material. And once again, it's the same as the pad. You come in and scrub, and now all those little bristles are able to get within the heavy texture of this hard vinyl plastic. So let's talk about a few things. One operating rule in life applied to any topic of life, which is this, prevention is always easier than the cure. How do we apply this to the world of detailing? Well, if something is never allowed to get excessively dirty, you're not going to have to use excessive chemicals or scrubbing or effort in order to get it clean, which is me just saying, keep it clean. And it's super simple to just keep it clean which in my world, that's gonna be touching things up weekly. Now I wash all my cars on a weekly basis. That's what's acceptable in my world. In your world, that might be overkill. Only you can decide that based on your desired goals. If you wanna keep your car in showroom looking condition for as long as you plan on owning your car, you're gonna to have to be consistent with your maintenance efforts. So for example, this white leather, as I noted at the beginning, there's only 2,800 miles on this car. Now, if I came to you and said, hey, Darren, I think my car needs to be detailed. Oh, really? Uh, how old's your car? Well, it's pretty much new. 
Okay, define new for me. Well, it's a 2024. Okay, how many miles are on your 2024 Cadillac? Well, I've got 2,500 miles on it approximately. Wow, not very many miles. I know people that will put on more miles than that in a single month. Okay, fine, hire me, I'll clean your car. I clean mine every week, but cleaning's not a heavy duty, hardcore, comprehensive detail. It's a washing and a touching up as needed based on the components of the car that get touched, like the steering wheel, the seat, the floor mats. Everything doesn't get the same amount of use, therefore you pick and choose. But it comes under the heading of maintenance. So if you're just going to maintain it, it's going to be so much simpler and easier and quicker just to maintain it very quickly. So in this application, or in the context of this moment, maintaining is literally grabbing your cleaner, lightly spraying your cloth and wiping it down. Bam, that's all that would be required if you did it on the weekly basis. Now you may say, oh, Darren, I'm not willing to do that. Maybe I'd be willing to do it once a month. Once again, only you can decide. All I'm illustrating is that the more frequently you do it, the less the amount of dirt is able to accumulate, which translates into the less work is required each time you want to clean it. Like anything in life, the longer you kick it down the road, the price tag attached to it grows and grows and grows. So this is an unwanted problem called dirt. I don't like dirt on my seat. I want it off my seat, but I know it's going to constantly accumulate on my seat. Therefore, the longer I kick that down the road and not clean it, the more dirt will accumulate, the more effort will be required when I decide to finally take care of the problem. So to come full circle, maintenance is always better than the cure. So wiping it down with a dampened microfiber cloth, dampened with your choice in cleaner, can be so straightforward and so simplistic. In fact, it's so simple, I probably would never even need to bust out a dedicated scrub pad or dedicated scrub brush in order to clean this because I'm keeping it up on the regular. And the added benefit is, wait for it, my car is going to always look basically showroom condition. How's that for a winning benefit? In my world, I love that. The added benefit is this, that dirt will deteriorate over the long term any material. So if I wanna keep my car for five years and I want my car to look showroom condition after five years, that's how I'm going to do it. So in the meantime, maintenance is super easy. I get to live with a showroom looking car all, full time, every single week. And at the end of five years, let's say it's time to get rid of the car and sell it. I've got a long line of people that wanna buy my car because it's, it looks brand new. So to me, it's just a win, win, win across the board. But I can't decide for you in your world. This is what is called standards. Only you decide the standards that are acceptable for you in your world based on the amount of effort you're putting, you're willing to put into maintaining your desired standards.